We're asked to solve the system below and to parameterize the solution set using vectors or column matrices. Because we're asked to parameterize the solution set, it's safe to assume the system has an infinite number of solutions. In order to express the solution set using vectors or column matrices, the solution will be expressed in the form shown here below, where we have column matrices or vectors. But also notice how on the far right we have a factor of z, which means we'll be using the variable z to parameterize the solution. We often use the variable t to parameterize a solution set, but in this case, we will be using the variable z. So the first step is to solve the system. Let's go ahead and use an augmented matrix and then use technology to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Notice how the equations are in the correct form or standard form to write the beginning augmented matrix. Because we have a system of three equations with three unknowns, we will have a three by four augmented matrix. Each equation gives us a row in the augmented matrix. Looking at equation one, row one is two, negative three, seven, negative 11. Looking at equation two, the second row is four, negative seven, 13, and negative 25. And from the third equation, the third row is six, negative eight, 22, negative 30. And now let's write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form using the Desmos matrix calculator. Step one is enter the matrix, click new matrix, change the dimensions below, and enter the elements. Double check the entries and press enter. Next, press RREF for reduced row echelon form, select matrix A, enter. And now the augmented matrix is in reduced row echelon form. Notice how we do have a row of zeros at the bottom, which does indicate we have an infinite number of solutions. Let's record this in our work. Again, because we have a row of zeros at the bottom, which corresponds to zero equals zero, which is always true, we know we have an infinite number of solutions. Let's write the equation each row represents. Row one indicates one x plus five z equals negative one, or x plus five z equals negative one. The second row indicates one y plus one z equals three, or y plus z equals three. The third row indicates zero equals zero, which is always true, which is why we know we have an infinite number of solutions. And now we want to parameterize the solution using the variable z. So let's begin by letting z equal z. And now we need to express both x and y in terms of z. So we will solve the first equation for x and the second equation for y. To solve the first equation for x, we subtract five z on both sides which gives us x equals negative one minus five z. Solving the second equation for y, we subtract z on both sides, which gives us y equals three minus z. So now we have the solution set parameterized in terms of z. Let's express this using column matrices. We will have the variable matrix as a column matrix or vector equals Using the equations that we just found, we know x is equal to negative one minus five z. We know y is equal to three minus z. And we know z is equal to z. Let's go ahead and express that as zero plus z. And now let's write the right side as two column matrices using addition. Again, on the left, we have the column variable matrix or the variable vector equals, we will have a column constant matrix plus a column z term matrix. Or again, we can say the sum of two vectors. So x equals negative one plus negative five z, y is equal to three plus negative z, and z is equal to zero plus z. 
And finally, to give the form as requested, we want to factor out the variable z from the far right column matrix. So the constant matrix, or constant vector, remains the same. And then this last matrix here on the far right, because we're multiplying by z, will be the coefficients of z, which are negative 5, negative 1, and positive 1. And now we've parameterized the solution set using vectors or column matrices as requested. I hope you found this helpful.